she has. This is what, one of the things we're gonna do. So I thought that I would show you if I had a daily budget of 75 pounds, how I would spend a day in London, not including a hotel. This budget is on what I would say is the lower end of visiting London, but it still gives you some room to do some great things and also make sure you're infusing your tourist dollar into the local economy. I did start the day with breakfast at home, and I think this is a good tip for anybody trying to save some money when you're traveling. Just go to the supermarket, get some like bread and jam and peanut butter or just some breakfasty things and have them in your room before you start the day and you'll save yourself a lot of money. I headed to my first act activity for the day on the bus. So that was one pound 55 to start off. And the bus took me to the Barbican. Walking up to the Barbican estate reminded me how much I love this area. The Barbican estate is essentially this housing estate that was built back in the 1960s in the brutalist style. And it was built in an area that was heavily damaged from World War II and they hadn't really done very much with the area. It's now a 40 acre estate that is home to over 4,000 residents and has over 2,000 flats in it. While the brutalist architecture style is obviously a love it or hate it kind of thing, I just love walking around this area of London and I think I think the architecture style specifically here is it just looks really interesting and really cool and the entire setup just makes you feel like you're in a completely different place than London. A couple of decades after the estate with all the housing was built there was added a bunch of other buildings like the Barbican Center which is where I was going that has become a cultural and arts hub in the city of London. There are also some schools and universities with campus on the Barbican estate and some bars and restaurants. So there was a John Dubuffet exhibition on at the Barbican Center. So I booked a ticket for that. And while a lot of stuff at the Barbican is free, this was an ticketed event that was 18 pounds. Definitely had a good look around. It was a very big exhibition. However, it was a good reminder to me that I don't actually really like art that much, but still happy to contribute my money to the Barbican, which I'm sure has suffered significantly during COVID. I do like art, but only some art and of the artists I know, I guess. Also, I didn't go on this instance, but if you end up going to the Barbican, you can book in a ticket for the Barbican Conservatory. It's the second largest conservatory in London, and it's just really beautiful to walk around. Tickets are actually free, but of course you should really give at least like a donation to say thank you for running this thing for all of us to be able to enjoy. After the exhibition, I went to the Lakeside Terrace, which is this beautiful spot within the Barbican Estate. I kind of just wanted to sit out in the sun. It was a beautiful day and had was the first beautiful day for quite a few weeks here in London. So I sat outside and I read my book for a little bit, enjoying the sunshine and the water features. Just picked up a coffee for three pounds, a decaf Americano with almond milk. Uh, but it's time to go get lunch we're gonna go to gonna walk down Clarkenwell Road to Exmouth Market. So this area that we're walking through, just stop for a second, is called Clarkenwell and it's quite interesting because it has the highest concentration of design businesses in the entire world just in this area so you'll see as you walk around lots of like interior design places and all kinds of stuff related to design. There's also a couple of really good hotels. I have an article where I talk about this area and why it's good to stay, and I list some of the hotels I think you should look at. Put a link to that in the description box of the video. If you've watched my video about unique areas to visit in London that you've never heard of before, you'll be familiar with Exmouth Market. It's basically this road, the actual road's called Exmouth Market, and they have a bunch of shops and restaurants and bars that are nice and quaint and cute and very good. And during the week, during lunchtime, they have a street market and they usually have a bunch of vendors set up and Londoners from who are working around the area will usually go for a nice and good cheap lunch to this market. So that's what I wanted to do. But because of COVID and I think a lot of people are still not in the office yet, it was a very reduced market. But I found a vendor selling Indian food that did a veggie box for me for just five pounds. 
it was very filling. So I grabbed that and then I went to the nearby park and sat and ate my lunch there. I did bring my water bottle along with me so I didn't end up needing to buy a drink which saved me some money. My feet were a bit tired so again I kind of just chilled in the park after I finished my food and continued reading my book. That's a really good tip for solo travelers. Bring a book along with you so if you find a spot that you just kind of want to chill in you can do some reading. Then I started making my way towards King's Cross but there was some place I wanted to stop before I got there. And that was the Calthorpe Community Gardens. I'd never been before and I'd read that this garden was not only a beautiful little spot, but it does a lot for the local community, both for the youngins with doing like sports programs for them and also the elderly with having um, planting workshops and gardening workshops for them and giving them something to do and, and teaching them how to do something. It's also an actual garden and the garden operates in a very sustainable way. They do like some pretty intense compost they grow a lot of stuff that they then use in their cafe and they're doing this very innovative circular um, gardening I don't know, really know exactly what it's called but you can learn about it if you go and visit and they have plaques that tell you what they're actually doing in their gardens this is like a little oasis in a very busy part of the city so you can go here and relax but make sure even though it's free that you do some kind of contribution whether it's buying something from their cafe they sell plants that you can buy and I personally just gave one of the volunteers a 10 pound donation because I didn't end up buying anything and by the look of her face it seemed like they really needed it and I have read actually that they've had severe funding problems again because of COVID. So even when things are free make sure that you are, do some kind of contribution to say thank you for providing this this atmosphere for free for everybody. I then continued my walk up to King's Cross. And there were two exhibitions I wanted to see. One about the Silk Road. This is what, one of the things we're gonna do. And this was all through Granary Square and it was put on by the Aga Khan Foundation. The second one was in Cold Drops Yard and it was the Travel Photographer of the Year exhibition where you got to walk around and see all of the photos from the runners up and the winners of the Travel Photographer of the Year competition. Both of these exhibitions were outside and they were both completely free. After exploring those exhibitions and doing a little bit of window shopping in the area, I didn't buy anything on my budget. My friend Carolina and her dog Rio came to meet me for a nice early dinner in Cold Drops Yard. We ended up getting a table at Plaza Pastor. It's a pretty affordable Mexican inspired restaurant. The founders of this group actually spent 10 years living in Mexico City, so the whole group of restaurants is inspired by that time there. But they they do really good tacos, like small plates of Mexican. It all tastes good and it's relatively affordable. Even the margaritas. The margaritas are very good and they're a decent price as well. I do recommend getting the honeydew margarita. I really want some margarita. I feel like this margarita was to shame any margaritas I ever made. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Friday. <laughs> We ordered enough food where there was plenty to take home and for me to have for lunch the next day and even so end with a drink my total came to 36.42 for my share of it all. And after a one pound 55 bus ride back home my total for the entire day was 75 pounds and 52p. So I hope this gave you a bit of perspective on what you can get at this price point when visiting London and maybe some ideas of things that you can go and do and see when you come to visit. This is part of a series. This is the first of the series. So click the box that's popping up here to watch the rest of this series at different price points or if it's not showing up yet, you're early. Come back next week. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.